Hey, welcome back to the series that we've been doing on Reputation. I've been going track by track to see if I can find a deeper meaning within each of the songs. Today, we're actually on track one, which is titled Ready For It. So I do have a couple things that we're going to be watching in today's video. So shout out to all those comments that gave me the recommendations on what to do for each track. So for Ready For It, we have four things lined up. We have the audio for the song. We have the music video. We have behind the scenes of the music video, and then we have a live performance from Jingle Ball 2017. So this is going to be a long one. I'll try to include those timestamps. That way you can kind of go to the part that you're interested in. Uh, but let's just get started. what I was expecting here. <laughs> I'm completely caught off guard. The last Taylor Swift song that I listened to was It's Time to Go or Renegade, one of the two. So this is quite jarring, <laughs> to be honest, but I really liked the cadence. Like I didn't think I would hear, I could be using this term wrong, rapping <laughs> from Taylor Swift. But let's kind of talk about some of those lyrics so far, because I don't know if I was really listening to them. I was kind of just focused on this like bass and trying to figure out what's going on right here. <laughs> Even my reading is going to sound so wrong because it's like so fast. So I'll try to read it fast <laughs> as a joke. Knew he was a kid. No, I can't do it. <laughs> Knew he was a killer first time I saw him. Wonder how many girls he had loved and left haunted. But if he's a ghost, then I can be a phantom holding him for ransom. Some boys are trying too hard. He don't try at all, though. Younger than my exes, but he act like such a man. So I see nothing better. I'll keep him forever like a vendetta. All right, so we're starting off with the Bad Bitch album, kind of just saying that um, she's going after someone that could be perceived as a bad boy or someone that's wrong for her because she knows that he's a killer or like maybe a relationship killer. She just knows that this person is not very monogamous and she's going to try to keep him forever. <laughs> it's almost like I can change him, but let's keep listening. I was really cool. I, I, I see how this is going to go. Touch me and you'll never be alone. I, I awesome i liked that it almost kind of turned into a pop song as she was getting through that chorus and then it's trans and then it had that beat drop again to go back into her like rapping cadence or whatever you want to call it um it kind of reminds me of an earlier like 2010s pop song not because of the way it sounds necessarily it just feels like that was the era where a lot of people would have like a pop song and then it would have a remix with like a big rapper at the time i don't feel like that happens so much anymore she doesn't have a featured artist on this. She just said that she could be the rapper on her own song, but it kind of seems like it's toying between like pop and then going back into whatever the other version of it it is. But so far I can already tell that I think this album is going to be for the production lovers um, because everything in the background sounded so cool. It almost sounds like she had so many computer generated in the backgrounds, but then it also felt like it had a couple real instruments coded in there. So I think that's a really cool fusion also. Um, and I just like the backgrounds, like they have like some whispers and stuff. I don't know. I don't really know how to describe it, but that was really unexpectedly cool. <laughs> but some of the lyrics that we did listen to was basically the chorus and it says, I see how this is going to go. Touch me and you'll never be alone. Island breeze and the lights down low. No one has to know. In the middle of the night in my dreams, you should see the things we do. In the middle of the night in my dreams, I know I'm going to be with you. So I take my time. Are you ready for it? Touch me, touch me and you'll never be alone. Kind of makes me think of confidence that you're like, you're never, once you have me, you're never going to want anyone else. And it almost seems like it hasn't happened yet because she's still dreaming it up. She's dreaming that what's going to happen when they're going to get together. But she kind of just knows that they are going to end up together. She doesn't mind playing the long game with this person. It's like, you'll come back. 
or I'll, we'll circle back. We'll, it's like that TikTok where it's like, we'll do a wrap around. I don't know if anyone's ever heard that, but um, yeah, it just kind of seems like she's confident in a new relationship that she's going to have. I was a robber. First time that he saw me. Stealing hearts and running up and never saying sorry. But if I'm a thief, then he can join the heist and we'll move to an island. And, and he can be my jailer. Burst into the tailor. Every love I've known in comparison is a failure. I forget their names now. I'm so very tame now. Never be the same now. That no one has to know is so cool. Oh. Uh, but I was kind of shocked. I want to read that second verse because I think it had something really cool in it. Uh, knew, knew I was a robber first time he saw me stealing hearts and running off and never saying sorry. But if I'm a thief, then he can join the heist and we'll move to an island. And he can be my jailer, Burton to this tailor. Every lover known in comparison is a failure. I forget their names now. I'm so very tame now. Never be the same now. Uh, those lyrics about being a robber kind of makes me think that maybe they are the cowboy like me and they kind of want the same things because she kind of mentioned in the first verse that this person was a relationship ender and they're not a very good person to be in a relationship with. And then she's also kind of saying that she's a robber. She steals hearts too. She's no uh, stranger to maybe toying people also. So they can do that together and maybe toy with each other and then that will work in a relationship if they're both going to be those types of people. I don't actually really know a lot about Burton to this Taylor, but I think of Elizabeth Taylor and um, her husband. Uh, I don't remember his name. I want to say Tim Burton, but that's <laughs> that's like the director that's around nowadays. Um, but I don't remember his name, but I know that they were like a famous celebrity couple that was kind of like on again and off again. Um, I wish I knew the reference a little bit more. I always say that I love when there's like history but this is more like a pop culture reference i guess but i do know that is something i just don't know everything about that history of it but i think that's kind of cool that that just got slipped into like such a interesting song that that could have time to be put into this i don't know i'm overwhelmed <laughs> I know that I have not heard from Taylor Swift. Um, I'm trying to think back to the albums that I've listened to. Folklore and Evermore definitely didn't have any songs that was like going crazy like that. Um, Midnight's? Midnight's is harder for me to remember because it was a couple months ago now, but Midnight's to me was like a mellow pop album. It was definitely different than Folklore and Evermore, but it didn't have this type of production. Um, I was comparing Midnight's a lot to Red because I felt like Red was somewhat of a pop album, but this feels like it's going to be a true pop album. You should say the things we do, baby. Okay, that was really cool. I think I liked it just because it was something I was not expecting at all. I really like the idea of touring with like electro pop. I feel like I said a minute ago too, like I feel like Midnight's did do that a little bit too because there was that robot voice at the beginning of one of the songs. I'm struggling to remember which one that one was, but I know she's done something, I guess, like this before. 
Um, but this might be the first examples of it because Midnight's obviously is her newest piece of work. So this is kind of like the intro to all of this type of music, I feel like, for her. Um, but I thought this was awesome. I think this would be a very cool um, hype song. Like, I don't know what scenario, but it just seems like you could get a little hyped to the song. <laughs> See how that translates into a music video and a live performance. I'm trying to think like what I think the music video is going to be like before actually watching it, but I really don't have any strong ideas about it yet. The only thing I can think of is like, I wonder if it's going to be a very tropical video just because she does mention a lot like in her dreams about going to the islands and like that's where she'll like protect this relationship or that's where they'll go to escape all of the things that they've done to other people. So I wonder if it's going to be kind of like a we're on the run type of video, but let's just see. All right, so the cover is graffiti. So I'm not sure if my island theory is gonna work, but let's see. unrelated but i do feel like graffiti is such an underrated form of art because like just looking at that i know it's just words but that also just looked so cool and i feel like that needs to be a more common art form <laughs> or like maybe not like trivialized to just being like street art which street art is awesome but like i wish people appreciated it a little bit more no he was a killer first time that i saw him wonder how many girls he had left and left haunted but if he's a ghost then i can be a fan this is sci-fi movie <laughs> or something and i've also never seen taylor swift in a music video like this I have no idea what I'm watching. <laughs> um, so Robert Taylor Swift is breaking into a science lab and there's a naked robot Taylor Swift that she's like kind of menacingly looking at. Um, maybe this wasn't about what? No, I was gonna say maybe this wasn't about a guy, but she kept referring to he like knew he was a killer. So I don't really know how this would connect to like Maybe her talking about herself. I don't know. Let's just keep watching. I genuinely have no idea. When I was a robber. First time that he saw me. Stealing hearts and running off and never saying sorry. But if I'm a thief, then he can join the heist and we'll move to an island. And, and he can be my jailer. Burst to the tailor. Every love I've known in comparison is a failure. I forget their names now. I'm so very tame now. Never be the same now. CGI on this is actually very cool. I know that sounds like a very nerdy thing to say, but like the effects are actually very high budget. Okay, so they're fighting for some reason, but I'm trying to figure out how this makes sense in the context of the song. The robot version is trapped in this bubble, and the robber version um, is toying with her and almost made her collapse. So I would go out on a limb and assume that the black outfit Taylor Swift is bad, but I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> Me 
Black Outfit Taylor was actually a robot the whole time, and this other version of Taylor is like killing her now. What does that say? They're burning all the witches. Okay. Okay, um, that was a cool video, but I have genuinely no idea how this makes sense to the song. Um, the only thing I can think of is if you watched my video or my last video on this channel, I did read like the prologue on the album and I kind of got the sense that this album was about being misunderstood. And one of the comments did say something along the lines because I came, well, because I'm coming into this album thinking it's just a revenge album. And they told me that it's actually the complete opposite. It's more like um, a love album. So I don't know again with this video, but the only thing I can apply to this is not really about the song, but maybe about the overall theme of the album where it's misunderstood um, because they had like the bad Taylor or whatever um, on the outside and like what I would assume is the good Taylor trapped on the inside. So like the bad persona that I even assumed that she was going to be in this album isn't the case and she just killed the bad version. So now she's going to be able to show the real her. I don't, I'm going too far with that. I don't know. Um, I thought it was really cool. Like I said, I think the CGI on that was really awesome. I just kind of wish I understood it a little bit more. Uh, but that is why we also are going to watch the behind the scenes of the music video. One of my comments did give this to me and it's actually his or her channel. Um, and it's this channel right here. So thank you for posting it. Uh, you posted it 21 hours ago. I know you did not post that specifically for me, but if you did for some reason, thank you so much because I'm, we're going to watch it together. So uh, here we are in my hallway of doom. This is where I spend the first half of the video and we have hidden lots of different little goodies um, in these halls, whether it be the number 13 or other numbers of significance. 91. I didn't pick up on any of that. <laughs> Maybe that's why I didn't understand the video. And the, and the 89 and 91 next to each other. 89 to 91. She has an album called 89, so birth year or referring to her old album. I don't know the 91. Also, if I forgot all the lyrics to my new album, I'd be good. Because they're all over the walls. So that was intentional, the burning all the witches. It must be like a lyric to one of the songs. I'm excited. I love a scavenger hunt now. Yes. I live for it. <laughs> Okay, so it looks like there's a second part that's clipped together. We're here um, to do the video for Ready For It. Patrick's not in it, he's just good luck um, and good vibes. Oh, they're keeping you warm in this? You know they're gonna turn you into a full cyborg, right? Like, yeah, you're like a full robot, man. Oh my god, Christian. That I like this behind the scenes because it's seeing things that I never would have noticed. Um, I guess I didn't really take into account like costume designs and costume designers. I just kind of assumed because I said the uh, effects were really cool that I just assumed that all of it was completely CGI. But it is kind of cool that they are really using like physical costumes in some of the parts. So 
So the characters that the boys are playing are robots. Uh, they have light up faces, um, but like not in a good way. Like in a way that makes you feel like you would not want to like go get a drink with one of them. Because they're not real humans. Okay, that I guess that added something to it. Um, I really wish that she would have maybe explained the video a little bit. Just, um, I'm sure you guys know it, so I count on the, the comments to <laughs> school me and tell me everything about it. But kind of wish I would have heard it from her. But that was the behind the scenes. Again, thank you um, to this channel for posting that and giving me the comment about it. I really appreciate that. Um, and now we're going to circle back to the last portion of the video, which is going to be the jingle ball performance from 2017. I wonder if anyone in that crowd knows the Taylor Swift's about to rap to them. Microphone, it's literally like wrapped around her arm. Some boys are trying too hard. He don't try it all though. Tell me the night exit for the entrance with your man so I see nothing better. I keep him forever. lot better than I thought she would and I don't mean to sound like a hater I just wasn't sure of how like this type of music would translate into a live performance just because most of the songs that I've heard live from her are when she's doing folklore and evermore and I think she shines in acoustic music um and she's actually doing really well to me like a hundred percent i would be out of breath <laughs> so shout out to actual rappers like because i feel like i talk fast but like i don't know if i, I would be out of breath and are you ready for it I can do the rhythm with it. It's like an epilepsy warning now. <laughs>
artists don't avoid the high notes that they put in their own songs. Um, I do think there are times to like lip sync and everything. Like I'm not saying every artist has to always just be belting, but I'm glad that she didn't like avoid that. <laughs> What an actual hyped up performance. I really like that as well. The only thing I will say about it that I didn't like love about it, I guess you could say, is I don't think it's really Taylor Swift's fault, but I could tell that she was putting um, the background vocals as robotic because that's actually what the studio version of the song sounds like. And I think it was cool to add that as a layer on top of the live performance, but maybe this is more of a capital thing, um, the jingle ball. But it just seemed at some points that the background um, robot or even just the background vocals was a little too loud because I could be wrong from the from what it seems she was singing the entire time. But sometimes it felt like the robot part was a little bit louder than her. Um, and again, I know people use background vocals all the time. It's not that it's just like the other performances I've seen from her, even outside of like Folklore and Evermore, like some performances from Red. Um, I remember it like them being there but not like overtaking her sometimes and I felt like that happened a little bit in this one but I feel like that also could be again one of these Jingle Ball sound productions because this isn't her own tour um, and I've been to like one of those iHeart radio festivals and it's literally just one stage that all of them have to share they just go out at different times and the one that I went to had some awful production <laughs> it wasn't a Taylor Swift one but it really wasn't good so I'm kind of chalking that up to that, but that would be my only kind of thing to mention that um, was kind of weird to me. But overall, I would like to just say this is going to be the title of this video. I was not ready for it <laughs> in the best way. I think it was really fun. Um, I feel like this is going to really change how I'm going into the next songs because now I'm kind of like, the next song has future on it. So now I'm just assuming that Taylor Swift is making an entire rap album. <laughs> so I really don't know where we're going from here. But thank you for watching. Thank you for watching this incredibly long video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I touched on all of the parts of Reputation that you wanted to, other than the Reputation Stadium tour. Um, but thank you again, and I'll see you in the next video.